Yo, yo, yo. What's up? Tickles. Revo. One timer. Ariel. Fizz. Bessa. Christos. Poppy. What's up? Yo, yo, yo. Yo, what's up? What up? Welcome to the channel, man. Wait for a couple of you guys to get in here, get this thing going and rolling. What is up, Alonzo? Kaiser. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it all, man. That's so why we're here. So, uh, I'm going to be using both AMC plus Ape. This is AMC plus Ape's chart. And I'm also going to be using just AMC's chart. We'll pull, pull up AMC's chart first. Go over everything here. I'll take down this music here for a sec all right so what is going on um so let's let's talk about this because there's a couple of things that we need to track here and, and clear up as well so for the macro poi it's still it's still tracking right now guys um micro poi so micro pois or weekly pois that one is inverse. If you guys go on the website and you're tracking the um, the POI on the website, it'll show you this exact setup. So let's go ahead and pull that up real quick. AMC. Okay. And then here's the little polylines. So this is the bearish one. Obviously, right now we are coming close to that level, that um, really that 70, 70, 75 level is going to be a low here for a bottom. We are doing a double bottom setup on AMC. Um, and what this is going to look like for this macro POI, and there's a couple of ways we can really track this. But you guys remember last video, I talked about this right here. Okay. How it's a similar, it, it, it's a pennant. It's a, it's a different setup. Okay. But it's ultimately the same thing because... And I'm going to I'm going to explain this here just like I did on the Discord earlier cuz I think this is a good way to look at it. So anything before this this um this range here. So this trend line here, it's almost acting as a well, it's resistance, right? But anything below that really is bearish. Think about it. You're on a downtrend until you cross this trend and stay there, it's not a bullish trend. So the way I, I describe this, uh, I took a pattern here, the entire pattern displayed here. It's red, right? Anything above, some of the uh, some of the RSI indicators do this. Anything above is green. So here we cross this trend line. Right now we are green. We're in green territory. We're still in green territory. Nothing's changed. Now, the POI is a range. Point of interest is a range. It's not one date. It's a large range. With the cycle um, analysis that I had done here on the purple pattern, I was telling people that when you're looking at that, you have to track a, a large range, which is October. Okay, so let's pull up the cycle here. There's been... There's been... One inverse POI on the entire AMC chart, okay? And it was right back here in November. And this is when all all markets basically started tracking together. Beta was neutral, okay? Everything was tracking together. And then we had a cycle here, and this is where you have to stretch things out, where everything was stagnant. It's, it's one cycle. You have your macro POI, stagnant pressure, macro POI, Stagnant pressure again, macro POI, 
And then right now we're headed towards what is this th this last cycle because there is no more you can do here, at least on the three-month cycle that I've been tracking here. There's no more you can do um, to fit in this, this macro sequence that we talked about that is making up AMC's chart. So it's very important that we look at things that way, um, especially here with the POIs. The POIs don't always indicate upside. They just indicate volatility is all they indicate. So it's going to depend a lot on what the market's going to do. And right now the market's going down. So we have a we are tracking an inverse POI. So micro POI inverse does not mean that this is that the macro POI has failed and that we are going to start coming back down. Right. I'm still going to give you a worst case scenario because I think it's important to talk about it. First, I need to drink water like that button, bro. Like that button, man, if you like the channel. Um, and yeah, share with your fam and your friends. Let's talk about it. Okay, so for this, we are going to take away the cycle here for a minute. Again, think about it this way real quick. I'm going to highlight these two so you guys can see why on a technical level this is bullish. And really, actually, actually, hold up, dude. Let's do this. Cross across, goes up here. So this is green. Perfect, dude. This is a, like right here, dude. This is it. Green, green, red. There it is. Okay. If we kind of look at things this way, I think it'll make a, a little bit more sense. But this is basically what's happening, okay? And then what a, a lot of people um, ask me if, you know, like, how, how are these lined up? Like, how can we how can we line up these these levels and... You, if you're reaching higher prices, the pattern is going to be larger. It's a fractal. So the setup is the same. But back here, you know, this was 120 days. All right, compared to this setup, guys, this is this is over a year. It's bigger. It's larger. It's going to be, it's going to take more time. It's not going to be as quick. So what I had told the Discord earlier was that for POIs as their volatility zones, that means an increase in volume. You get these guys right here, okay? It's still a lot. You still go up a fuck ton, right? You go from eight bucks, well, the scale chart, eight bucks all the way to 17. That's 100% back here, 130%. Um, from the bottom, it was like 200 and something. So, you know, with these setups on the POI, it's the lingering effect. Because if you go back here on the cycle, on the first cycle, way back here. The POI, where is it? It's right here. May. All right? That's the POI. This is the aftermath. It's what happens after the point of interest takes place. So naturally here, well, we had a week. Uh, this took a week. So if we come back here, this is, this is why things get so narrow. So... Uh, short term here, you can be looking at the POI, right? So this one right here is a little different, right? Because November's run is so small and so tiny that you 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 gotta you really gotta uh, set them apart a little bit from what's going on right here on the macro scale. Anything on the on the small on the small scale is gonna be a lot harder to track and um, a lot harder to, to to correlate with. But we can say that here. You know, from the from the projector pattern, it took about a day or two before you had the POI happen, right? Back here, it took about it took about five days, right? About a week, so five to a week projector. And I bring this up all the time because it's important. And then back here, it took about two weeks, right? So it goes from days to weeks to about half a month, and then 
here it's the same thing once we get to that point okay it's gonna take longer for this thing to go up so once the poi plays out it's gonna be larger you're reaching for higher prices it's gonna be larger so um you know that's why i tell people like don't you know don't focus too much on the you know the the date late september going into october poi is volume to either side okay and then you use technicals to round that out and make your your own judgment right of what you think is going to happen in this case i see a lot of things that are pointing up i see a lot of things that are pointing up and that is well there's a couple of things so we talked about the quad witching curve right the quad witching curve first time we close bullish okay this is like very bullish to me like the fact that we just it's first time that we close over and we're right now we're hitting resistance on what was this previous level back here in march 2021. second thing that's bullish is the cross of resistance this macro resistance trend line we just crossed it we bounced off of that just like projectors do guys they come back up come back down to test one last time before climbing back up okay so a lot of talking but gotta gotta get these things out the way right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up two scenarios so i'm gonna give you um i'm gonna give you a scenario where amc would go up uh after the poi ma the macro poi and i'm gonna give you a scenario where the poi plays out inverse so bearish scenario bullish and bearish scenario okay i'm gonna talk about both all right But it's all good, man. And like in the end, we are curling up. And we the first time that we did it, right, was September on quad witching right here was the first time we did it. And that is already a good sign. So, you know, I, I like, dude, the longer we wait for this, really, the more like parabolic this move's gonna be. Cause these guys are just suppressing, suppressing, suppressing volume. We've also never like the the spy is not caught a like dude it's on a downtrend right now sure and i'm gonna i'll pull up the spy here in a little bit and talk about that uh let, let's go over the bullish and bearish scenario here so i'm gonna pull up the bullish scenario first which does have a short-term bearish um, outlook here and there's two ways this can go down all right so we're gonna take i'm gonna take this just for reference we're gonna take this pattern back here So let's pull the same thing here. Touch it back down. It's going to be right around here, the 26th. Okay. And this right here, we're just going to be paying attention to the point at which it came back down. And these don't have to look identical or anything. We're just tracking the macro. In this case, the macro POIs here, which there's one right here and there's one back here. And guess what? This one lines up with the October POI, okay? So how does this work? Because the worst case here, if we did have a short-term uh, downtrend here for the weekly POI, which is coming down right here, okay? The longer these guys drag it out, guys, the more they're, they're more the more money these guys are making just selling those calls, right? We we know that this is completely driven through the through the option chain. We know, we know that that is a major factor here in controlling the price action, manipulating the price action. So, okay, cross resistance, come back down. Right now, we are trending back down to test this level again, right back down here. We, are, we already know that AMC plus APE has uh, almost created that. So I said that, and this is why it's important that we get a little bit more information on what APE is doing, but the fact that AMC, that APE is down where it is right now is can sometimes uh create different setups here for amc so what i mean by that is well, let's pull it up so amc plus eight right up here indicator all right amc plus eight if we look at the, the resistance trend line and where it is right now okay, it's a little different but you can see that it's very close to already touching it. Okay, combining both. This is AMC's true price is right up here. So if Ape were to take 
a larger push back down. Say it does drop another $2, which highly unlikely, but if it does uh, in the short term, right? I'm not saying in the long term, but if it does here in the next couple of days and we see it go down uh, to like two bucks or whatever, well, that would be an indicator here that AMC is going to bounce off of this level of resistance. Now, how would that look like down here? Because if, if they... You know, if AMC remains in this area, then we would just create a double bottom setup and then we would start bouncing from here. So worst case, I would see AMC come down here to the 750 area between today and tomorrow and then start the bounce. Now, the bounce would probably not happen until Monday okay, of next week. And that would start what is this um, push back up. So this double bottom setup right to start going back up that's that's like the short term and you can see that here with this pattern right the short term bearish outlook where the poi the macro poi is still active where the macro poi is still something that will happen if um if we bounce here in the short term um okay so let's take amc to save out there for a sec that would be the bearish scenario. The the another short term bearish scenario is that Ape starts trading sideways and then AMC drops in this case and comes all the way back down here to seven dollars. That's also a possibility. Uh, and then both of these would really one is going to test that level of support before the other, I believe, and that is what's going to cause this bounce to happen. Okay, so one. We'll head down here first, and then that it'll either um, touch that previous level of resistance one last time before bouncing to have a very similar setup to what we had back here. Okay, and then that is that should be that spring that we're looking for here to start coming back up. So this would be like a like a short term bearish that would still make this POI active. Now the, the POI here, it's very important that when like when we're tracking these POIs, guys, if this is a positive POI, I'm giving you the bullish scenario first with two short term bearish uh, scenarios with within it. So if it starts coming back up, then we have the POI here around October, early October time, around the second week, we start coming back up, we would need to follow through with what is this broadening wedge that I talked about. It's the only way I believe that this lingering uh, setup here would create uh, more pressure here where they would not be able to control this. I'm gonna give you an example, two examples of this, where this happened and where it's happening right now. So uh, for the week, we actually have also um, Saba. Uh, Look at that. Uh, so this was one of the setups that we had here for the for the POIs. And right now we're actually exceeding. We're crossing through on the uh, on on the setup here for Sava. So it's doing really good. I think calls are up like 300%, like pretty insane. So with this setup though, something to consider is, well, this is a very similar uh, setup. It's a little bit shorter. Obviously it starts here in, in July. And what is this doing? What pattern is this recreating? Well, look, what is this? This is GameStop. GameStop before it ran to 300. What did it do? It's a, it's a similar setup, right? You can see that here. It's a shake off, it's a, it's a ascending broadening wedge is what it is. Back and forth, shake off, shake off, shake off. Shorts can't, sh they can't do it anymore. Boom, algorithm breaks. You start going up and down. I think we're experiencing that right now with uh, with Sava right now. Same thing, same setup, a little bit different. You can see it is a little bit different. There are certain points here that don't play out right away. Uh, some points here have more volume, but overall, like the setup is very similar. And this is exactly what we have going on right now with AMC's chart. It's just a little bit different, all right? See right back here, something like that in its own way, a different shake off, but ultimately the same goal.
you're at the bottom, this is taking a lot longer, which means, which also means that the, the chances of this thing being so parabolic that, you know, it does explode and it does squeeze are higher because there's so much suppression going on and so many people in on this play. So just, just think about what this can do. Like ultimately the goal is, um, you know, these shorts are just trying to shake it off. It's exactly what they were doing with GameStop and they couldn't, they couldn't. So we're, we're in that right now, dude. We're experiencing that right now. It's just taking longer. It is, it is a stock that is heavily manipulated. There's a lot of volume on it. So it is taking a little bit longer. So back to this, the bullish scenario here, best case scenario. All right. We start going back up here next week, either bounce or bounce here, double bottom, start going up next week. And then we should, we should set up right around this range. As soon as we cross resistance, resistance is going to be uh, very important to cross first. Um, and then once we cross resistance, it'll be a lot easier to set up for what exactly for what, uh, Sava is doing right now. So look at this. So, uh, you can kind of see maybe this like mid trend here, which is a double bottom on AMC kind of look at it that way, except here. So this level right here for Sava would be right here for AMC, right? You cross it once you come back down, right? Cross it once, come back down. This is on an uptrend. AMC is also on an uptrend. Okay, but it is a little bit uh, more stagnant. So it's not fully, fully an uptrend. And that's why we want that confirmation here. We want it, we want it to be a higher push up so that it's a clear uh, broadening wedge. As soon as we cross this level of resistance here and set up right around this $17 range, it'll be a lot easier for this thing to keep pushing up uh, and not stop. Because guys, once you're on a bullish trend and the shorts like, they're, they've already given it their all. They've tried to, you know, bring this thing down to, to low levels. It's going to be very hard to do it when you're up here, when you're trading up here. That's why it's very important that we get there first. We cross that level of resistance. All right. So I hope that um, that makes a little bit of sense here with how the POIs work. Uh, in this case, we would have something a little bit tighter here on the POI, I believe. And I still have the... There it is. That's the true levels here of GameStop. True date, date range here. And you can see that the POI lies in right around here. And it's actually funny because this pattern here is, um, what's re it, it is kind of replicating this last pattern here very nicely, even though it's, you know, trading down here. Again, I don't think that really matters. Setup is a little different and uh, ultimately trying to do the same the same thing, same goal. Okay, so I gave you the bullish scenario and I'm also gonna give you the bear scenario because you know, with POIs, with points of interest, there's always a bear scenario and uh, it just is what it is. Like we not gonna sit here and just be a thousand percent uh, bullish on something if there is the opposite effect that we've experienced before. So the way I had pulled this up earlier was well, I used to cycle, obviously. We've only done a bearish. And when I talk about these macro POIs, we're looking at the green going into blue. So it's this arc back here. That's the macro POI. We've only done one inverse POI in the cycle, and that happened back here. Okay. This entire thing is the only inverse cycle that we've had. And you can see here on this range, it starts going down very quickly. So unlike these other guys who are going up, both of these on the POI. So an inverse POI would, uh, and you have to change the ratio, obviously, the height, because we're dealing with completely different uh, you know, price action here. So, and then also these do shift around like this. All the cycles do that. Some do play out two, three days earlier and they start showing that um, right away here. So I had also pulled up this uh, price range here because uh, you know, so people need to figure, uh, 
know this too, that when we do track upside, it's a lot easier to see a larger pattern than it is downside because downside is just, you know, you can only go to zero. Whereas upside, you can go to infinity, right? Technically. And that's why shorts can really get screwed over here if, um, if things don't go the way they want it to. So, uh, something, so here, hundred percent would be 50% down would be the same, right? So 50% down from where we're at would be the $4 level, obviously. Um, now if we're expecting here on this POI, we're expecting to go and start crossing through. It wouldn't be a one day event. It would take a couple of days, right? It's the, the lingering effect. I'm sorry. Uh, the lingering effect would be a couple of days long. So here, an inverse POI would be pretty drastic. I think, and I had said this, that I would see us coming down to uh, probably the $6 range first before bouncing and springing around the $5 range if things did play out inverse. It would be about probably about a 40% drop, maybe a 50% drop from where we're at now, inverse, right? And then this is the thing that would um, would suck a little bit because once you get down to this range, you know, I wouldn't be expecting anything like, not saying it's impossible, but I, if we did get down here, I wouldn't be expecting like a, something like that, where we just start going up. Like, I don't think that's, I, I don't think that's really possible with this, in this larger setup here. Typically when you get down here to this range, you do have a stage where it's just dry. It's drought. Okay. Initially what you would get though is and this is it goes with the blue pattern here initially you would get a spring and it would be a pretty nasty one so i think here i think there would be a lot of opportunity if we did come down on an inverse poi and this would be in the next month guys if this did if this did uh happen we would probably see amc go from five maybe all the way up to eight or nine to get back into the zone okay and then from there you would start to see this entire thing replicate itself again. You would see the arc pattern start coming back down and do something like this until you got to the next POI. The next POI, you would start coming back up slowly, possibly create some more pressure. And, you know, this is where we would keep tracking the POIs. I mean, the POIs are not going to, um, to end here, but this would invalidate the three month cycle that we talked about where we, you know, we, we brought up the purple pattern and stuff. It wouldn't validate that theory uh, as good as it looks. The three month cycle wouldn't be in, in, in place. This is, this would just keep tracking the 62 day cycle, which is a little bit different. Uh, so this would be the worst case, dude, worst case scenario. I see, I would see something like this happening. I think this is still, this is a, a stretch these guys would need to short it another 50 percent from where it's at now and and you know we would get something like this just like we did back here very similar setup actually and you can see how the poi here how it lies on may 12th massive poi uh some of the contracts here went from two cents to to a dollar fifty like this was massive massive so um this this would be the only way I would see something like this happen. And yeah, it would drag out a little bit. But I'm just laying out the possibilities out there for you if things did play out that way. Right now, things are more uh, inclined to go up, in my opinion. I see it. I see it short-term bearish, possibly coming back down and bouncing at 7 before starting to come back up, as we had mentioned, and uh, and hopefully crossing this level of resistance first setting up up here and then going right that is what i got so far for you guys dude because yeah man shit's uh shit's crazy right now markets are crazy very little volume too in the markets which is weird so um so yeah man and I'm here, I'm here for questions too, man. If you have some questions, throw them in the chat.
Yeah, so KMED, I did go over the, the bullish scenario. It's It should be about maybe 20 minutes, 20 minutes before this one. I, that's the one I did first. I did bullish and then I did bearish. Uh, but I am more I am more bullish. And I talked about this too. I said that, um, see if I still have these patterns. Yeah, I do. There we go. I'll pull up the setup again. Just talk about it real quick. But this right here is 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 basically how we should be looking at AMC right now. Um, you have your, let's recreate this one too. A while back, I called this the, uh, the megaphone effect because it is, it really is a megaphone. We're waiting for that larger megaphone to play out, but you have your, you know, your green, your upside. Uh, you can kind of, you can probably see that down here as well. If we, if we track some levels here of, of resistance, we would probably see a very similar setup here on the, you know, on the very, very micro, on the micro, if we were looking at this back here, you know, this would be a very small, very small, uh, projector here that, that drags this whole thing up, right? Or you can look at it from here too, something like that. Yeah, I think this one might be the one that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So the same thing here. You know, it's bearish until you get to this green, and then you cross resistance, you go. Same thing here. You cross resistance, you go. Now we're doing that here, but on a much, much larger scale. So it's going to take more time. It's not It's not going to just go up. The, the POIs, guys... I do technical analysis on them and whenever we get to points for example I've, I said this before too you know here what we wanted to see here was a bounce like like this not down here because if we're down here it makes it a lot uh, easier a lot more likely for us to hit you know come back down and hit a double bottom or even come back down here and set up for a spring which is also a possibility so technical setups do matter and they make it more likely for you to go up if you're on a bullish, you know, trend uh, uh, pattern. And, uh, and, and that's going to make it a little bit harder, sure, for AMC to do, to do that push. But we talked about this and every setup is, is just a little bit different from the previous patterns we track. And that's AMC right now or GameStop. Uh, that we are tracking the broadening wedge i also pulled up sava it's one of the pois that we had for the week um as it started to come back up here added that to the website because this is doing the same thing that gamestop is doing you can see that right here now i'm not paying attention or anything to the how high this is going to go in that it could sure it could go all the way up there if if these guys are extremely extremely short on Sava here, but it's a very similar setup. It's um, it starts off shaking off, back and forth, back and forth. These setups, dude, are very bullish in the market. Back and forth, back and forth, and then you 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 get up here, right? SOS as they call it, right in Wyckoff terms, and then you just go, you fucking boom. So, I think all these markets are waiting to do that next. And something I found pretty interesting too, I do this a lot, man, with sector rotations and stuff like that. I look at patterns. I look at what happened in the past. This is, um, let's, let's pull up AMC here. This is January of 2021. Okay, what happened back here? We saw Sava start coming back up. AMC wasn't doing much. Heavy volume coming in. Starts coming back up back here. AMC is still dry. And then it just starts the boom, right? AMC really started to pick off uh, around the 19th. 19th of, of January is when it started to really, really push up. So, I mean, just think about it that way a little bit, man. These these two setups are kind of similar. We're starting to see Sava go first. Some of these, some of these stocks just go first on the, uh, you know, in the way these guys take turns covering these larger institutions and you know right now amc is a little bit drier so it's not quite doing that yet but we're starting to see that effect happen here with other stocks so that might be a good indicator just like we track ethereum classic we track the markets too 
uh, to know what's going on, how things have you know previously occurred in the markets, and and that gives us a little bit more room to to make a better decision on what things can do, right? Um, I don't like, like guys, um, it's really just like, I know, I know there, you know, there's tension in the community and stuff, but you guys have to realize that, you know, what, what's going to happen here. Um, you know, we're, we're, this information that we're getting here, I mean, we're looking at a chart, we're making our analysis through a chart that is given to us, displayed through us, that everybody can look at and see. At some point, you know, the chart will start, will start turning, will will start turning around, and it's we're currently seeing that right now. You just have to remain, you know, remain with your original conviction if whatever it is that you have. And in the end, you know, this is it is a risky, it is a risky play. But you know, I've been tracking AMC here for almost two years now and uh and uh, dude i'm i'm covering it man i'm doing this because i believe that this thing has potential i believe that there is a lot of potential here now the approach i take might be a little different than uh some of the people out there in, in the way that they look at gamestop and amc but you know ultimately i mean ultimately what everybody's trying to do here is make money right i mean that's the that's the goal the goal is to make money um so i think there's there's a lot you can do and that's one of the approaches I take here is you know cycle analysis is one of the things I've learned from AMC is uh, the cycle analysis approach which which is spotting with the market makers that have over leveraged positions spotting points of interest in the markets with other cycles with other stocks and knowing when those stocks go up as amc is trading sideways in between you can track a lot of these other things with other markets and make money off of that this is the one thing that i've learned with amc and it's opened up for me is how market how markets work and, and you know there's a lot of theories on on how markets work and stuff but consistent ones and here what that we have found on the pois and how accurate they've been you know that is something I'm going to continue doing here with AMC and, you know, ending up with the cycle analysis approach, which is understanding how patterns work as well. And the option chain, this is a, uh, just a, a full discovery here of the mechanics of the markets. And, um, I think that's a really good thing in the end with, uh, with AMC, with all these other stocks, dude, it's 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 a good thing i mean and you know i keep saying this but like there's two things you can do like you can you can sit there and just wait until things go down uh and 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 just relax and do your thing or you can also just play their game and you know i i i'm playing their game because i see potential here not only for amc but if this is discovering new things new ideas in the way the market functions you can make a lot of money with other with other stuff right uh yesterday i pull i had pulled this up as well we had um intraday here meta which is facebook right let's go here on the one minute chart intraday pois are something you can track as well it's something that i've been doing here i do this a lot on the discord um, but right here, okay, I was checking, uh, uh, intraday POI and so I, I pulled this up here because I thought it was relevant. I really do think it is, but this is how I send out some of the, uh, contracts that I have here on the discord. And, you know, I sent this out here at 1046 central. Okay. And then an hour later, POI happens, starts going up. You can see here, I think it topped at like. 22 percent it's good it's a good return right for a short-term poi intraday poi a lot of these happen 
with the way the algorithms behave. Algorithms have a, um, they have a, a goal, they have a deadline, they have to do it by a certain time. You see these happen a lot with, um, you know, with indices that have expiration, like uh, the SPY has four or three expirations every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And typically the way you see that here is, well, with the larger uh, blue chip stocks that have a lot of liquidity, SPY has a, a larger holding, you see those guys play out the POIs with some kind of catalyst. And that's what we had. We had a catalyst play out right after, about an hour later, um, dragged on there. So again, it's a different approach that I take, but it works. It works for me. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty efficient. So I'm going to keep doing that, man. I'm going to keep doing that. And, and, uh, because of AMC, I mean, AMC has opened that opportunity up. It really has. So it's a good thing in the end. Awesome, awesome. I just realized how big the chat is here on the uh, on the thing here. But yeah, guys, really dry, really dry volume today in the markets. Not much going on. Oh, I'm gonna show you guys one more thing here. Well, not one more thing. I'll probably end up end up showing you guys more things, but. Uh, so, well, I do have a, I have an indicator here that I, I use for tracking, uh, that helps me track some of the POIs. It's, it's an indicator I made. It's called spots. It's going to be available here on the, on the discord shortly. But what this does is, so it acts very similar. It's a moving average. Uh, and it has this uh, delay here using cycle uh, formulas. So this does track the cycle. And I use it on a very specific time frame here with certain inputs too as well. So what this does is it highlights these sections here. And I had talked about yesterday why it's important that when you see the inverse color here, so it's pink, whenever you have a blue circle cross through on that really short term gap. So it's a very, very tiny gap you typically get either a bullish or a bearish rally. Um, well, bearish would be a inverse rally. Uh, you get a full push through and then a respect on this trend here. So it almost acts as, as a resistance uh, curve, smooth it curve. So I use this a lot here to predict what the markets are gonna do. And I have two forecasts here for what the market's gonna do. Um, so the first forecast is a wedge forecast. And you can see that right here with the smoothed curve, how it would be displayed. Wedge forecast. Okay. Got the market doing this and stopping right around here towards the end of October into November. Now, this setup can turn into something else on the macro scale. It could, you know, fully cross through and turn into a massive double bottom setup. Or it can also break back down and turn into probably a larger wedge if things decided to start trending back down. Now, I'm personally uh, more bullish uh, than I am bearish in the market right now. I think we've had a massive beating, and uh, I think things are going to start curling back up. Okay, this is uh, the scenario one. I also have a spring forecast back here, which is this is a, like the spy is no notorious for doing these moves. Okay, spy does these a lot. Okay, that. Okay, and that right there and you also have double bottom so this can technically also come back down here level of support all the way down here you get very close to COVID previous uh, COVID levels all the way back down here before you get a quick spring yes once you have a bottom you will have a, a massive spring it's gonna look like this okay you're not going to get a bottom and a continuation back down. Once there is, or, or uh, I'm sorry, not a continuation back down. You're not going to get a bottom, and then you're going to trade sideways there for a little bit. No, dude. Once the bottom is in, you get this effect in the market. And it typically is a massive, of, like, this is a really good opportunity in the market because everybody's buying. Like, 
just have a, an inflow and volume coming in and so much volatility in the markets from that volume coming in. So I see it as an opportunity. Um, it's crazy. This is like playing out perfectly right now. I, I did this yesterday. Okay, spring, wedge, both are um, ultimately bullish in the end. One is a little bit more bearish in the short term, and that's this one. This would go with the inverse POI that we have on AMC. I keep saying this, but AMC is a way to track what the markets are going to do. Okay, Every time we have a volatility event, AMC typically goes last, just like we do with crypto. You see Doge, Shiba, they go up right before Bitcoin is going to dump. The same thing here with AMC. AMC and GameStop tend to go up, they rally, and then the market starts coming back down. So it's a, it's a way you can kind of forecast what the market's going to do. And we have this cycle coming up here, point of interest. We know that as soon as that plays out, you know, if it's positive, that typically indicates that the market's going to turn around and be bullish. So this is going to be the wedge forecast. Wedge forecast would mean SPY goes up first. AMC starts to rally around early October, okay, right around here. And then we decide what's going to happen back here. First scenario. Second scenario is we have an inverse POI and we have a spring set up here on the macro scale of the SPY, which is going to be uh, coming back down here at the 3, 340, 340 around that range uh, for that setup here. And then all of these in the end will come back to reach this level of resistance which is a macro level of resistance this one does it as well except it's a little different because there is a um there is a range here right these secondary uh pumps here so you have your resistance and then you come back down to test it one last time that's very important to track here because we've done it once two three and then four right here and in this case it would be five and that would be the break if we do th this would be the confirmation guys if we are going to break this trend this thing must like would start going up here around november um so yeah very cool indicator here both of these have crosses um both both are tracking right now both are tracking and i'm expecting some kind of a spring here going into uh tomorrow so 371 is going to be the first level to track here on the market and the spy uh, and then hopefully that will also do something here with Amy. It'll be a spring setup, double bottom, and then start going up again. So, yeah, hoping for the wedge, man. The wedge is what we want here for the SPY. If things do um, remain bullish here in the markets, this would be the setup I'd be looking for. Now I'm not going to make like a like a crash forecast or anything because I don't I don't really see like personally I wouldn't see something drastic happen here for a while like if we were to have a crash I'm going to give you like wh what my thoughts are on this I think one of these would play out first like if we and and I think the wedge looks I mean look just look how pretty that looks this looks like an awesome reasonable pattern here on the spy projection okay which is a, a wedge and i think for this to become some kind of a bearish setup here well now what we have to do is zoom out and what we do because uh, you get a better picture of what's what the markets are going to do if you zoom out um here the wedge would look a little bit like this right there Be a little bit quicker Okay, here's resistance. Okay, now what do you do though? Because you're trending up here, and uh, and this becomes so what it well in this case it's a little different. We do have to treat it a little bit different because the wedge would would basically start back here in April, and it would do something like this, right? But if we're taking this entire pattern, it could be something else, uh, and that's why I always say it's important to really try and project as many different patterns 
here I use it by I, I have a deadline I have that um, I have a vertical line that I always put and I track if I'm tracking like certain quad witching dates or option expirations that are, that are very important where I know they're gonna like roll over leaps and stuff like that there's typically historical data you can use that um, helps you out here but but yeah this um, so I use that the cycle indicators here I use I also have one called copycat here okay this uses the fast Fourier transform okay to project some of the patterns that have played out in the past but they're very smooth it out uh, using only frequencies that you input in so very specific frequencies that we we track here with the Fourier transform uh, and then well this is a three days so for the spy I love this thing dude it's, it just get I mean it also just spits out patterns that kind of give you a better perspective here for like what the markets would do now I wouldn't use this as a way to like track like yo I'm gonna do this uh track this pattern because this thing spit it out or anything no it's you have to use this according to its individual cycle here that the that specific stock tracks and there's a lot that goes into finding out what what kind of uh cycles these these tracks so this indicator with spots so this is copycat with spots are very very useful when tracking not only intraday pois but the shorter term pois you can see things um as things are curling back down here okay and you're you're trying to cross uh these levels here so these two would be extremely accurate here on the three hour chart you can see that as this is curling back down turning red and I'm working on a, uh, uh, basically what this is gonna do is it's also going to project this pink portion here that I had that I drew earlier that was like a, a rough draft. But this is going to have something in it where it will also project the smoothed curve it has coming down and then it will project it while also crossing through. So these indicators will like um, be merged together at some point. It's gonna take a little bit of work for me to do that. And it'll give you a couple of scenarios of what can happen if the stock were to do something like that. Where it, where your best uh, time to go in would be if it was tracking that and when that cross would happen here. So pretty cool stuff, man. Sometimes it's good to just sort of project what kind of um, things you can have here, what kind of setups. Let's look at Amy intraday. We haven't done that yet, so let's do it. It's 12.28. Okay, just by looking at the market, it's very dry. Right now, I'm not looking to play anything just because of, again, how, how dry it is. Tomorrow, I am going to be uh, playing some things. Uh, I do it on the Discord a lot here. Our majority of of, of, uh, of plays are option plays i do a lot of option plays just because i think there's a lot of um leverage you have uh to to make money right um one of the i think the the best profit that i have sent out on the discord was a mara mara call that went up almost two thousand percent and that was so far the best one i've only been on the discord for for three months so we're hoping to get some more of those um, some more of those plays obviously with a drier market it's a little bit harder for that because you know you don't have many stocks going up right now everything's just very very dry in liquidity uh, you can see that so it's it's important to wait man it's and be patient on those uh, and right now I see something happening here uh, tomorrow towards the end of the day hopefully here so in the next couple of hours if you want more info on that make sure you click the link below man it's uh it's through patreon everything if you do want to support the channel and stuff and join up man that's a good way to do it uh and it's fun in there it's fun in there for sure amy's curling up though amy's looking good we did play out this pattern like right back here yesterday too a little bit
If we start to rally, we'll yeah, we'll, we'll definitely uh, play some music, play some ABBA. Okay, let's see, and let's use, let's also, let's see what AMC plus Ape is doing here intraday. I still gotta post this indicator, man. See how different they both look? Well, they don't look extremely different, but they, they are, uh, they are different. This is AMC versus AMC plus Ape. So that's AMC's part of it, and then the rest would be Ape. Even if I were to stretch them out, you can still see how how different they are. Because apes, well, obviously in there. We're making our projector right now, intraday, as we um, as we sort of see this here. We're making a little projector pattern. And it looks it looks better. It actually looks better on, on apes, AMC plus ape. So AMC's true price. You can see it's starting to curl back up. It's funny because this right here, guys, looks exactly like the monthly chart you know what so let's do this let's go amc plus ape because that way i can actually take the pattern uh it's something you cannot do if you have an indicator which sucks so we're gonna do this we're gonna take this and we're gonna copy it we're gonna bring it over here amc i'm gonna paste it so now we have it right here, but that's not what we want to do. We want to bring this because it's a little bit better. You can see that it actually hovers and it respects uh, the support level. This one does. This one, it's still respecting it, but you can see it's, it's you know, this one's more on a, bull, on a bullish trend here like it wants to go. And this is actually what we want to see for the monthly chart. So if I, if I pull up the monthly chart here on AMC, it's exactly what we're looking for. Now we got the little pattern here. We can stretch it out. And you can see that this is what we're looking for. Now actually, well, this one looks like it would be, yeah, no, this one actually looks a lot more like just here. Looks a lot more like just AMC. So let's go ahead and on the one minute, because that's the projector. And I'm just trying to show you guys an example, so don't don't like, you know, I wouldn't track this or anything like that. But look at that, <laughs> yo, that's that's insane. Look at that shit, right there. And let's do let's take the moving average here. Both of these are projectors. They both look extremely similar. Uh, one's on the micro, one's on the one minute, and one's on the monthly chart. These are projector patterns. You guys know how projectors work. You bounce off of resistance and at the man, the monthly chart projector is is so perfect too. Why I am still very bullish looking at this guys is uh gives me hope, man, for for the I mean, look at it, dude. Look at this awesome projector pattern. Just just chilling, dude waiting to go up right there and we're looking for that second bounce here uh and you guys already know you know how projectors work i'm gonna pull up the infamous projector we had here in march or in march in uh june you guys already know, man. Obviously, this projector is its own projector. Every projector is different. But most will come down and test uh, their level of support. So in this case, this projector that we have here has its own level of support. And then the lingering effect will be a lot quicker. Obviously, we're on the monthly chart. So this right here is not would not look like that or anything on this. It's very important that we treat each projector depending on the time frame we're looking at treated it on its individual like in its individual form once it does play out and not track the rest of the fractal because the rest of the fractal is extended to fit only with 
with the information we have here on which in this case I mean it's a very tiny projector so it's not this would not be ideal to track you know this projector on the monthly chart it just wouldn't make sense uh, but you got you get the point projectors up and down and then they set up to start climbing back up very quickly why I'm still extremely bullish so yeah let's let's take this guy all the way back down here let's take it to uh, the little tiny projector back here let's see if we can see it a little better on the small scale monthly projector here there it is getting ready to explode dude Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a little smaller here. It's a little bit big. I had changed the screen because um when you have different resolutions and stuff, it messes with the entire setup. Okay. All right, let's see how the market, see how everything else is doing. We're getting a small relief bounce here intraday on the market. AMC, okay, cool, cool. Oh, you guys want to see something else that's crazy? Okay. Is it just AMC, right? And this is what AMC. Yeah, let's go here. And actually, hmm, double bottom. You guys already know. I don't even have, I don't even have to tell you, man. How many ways can we look at this here? Oof. Well, I don't know. Should we would we look at it on this? Man, dude, when when these things like extend, crazy. <laughs> look at that. It's funny, dude. I love, bro. I love patterns, man. Like, I tell people all the time, like why uh why draw like i mean no you should draw lines for sure but the cool thing about just taking a pattern you i mean you're taking a reference a historical point that is a reference to what is going to happen in the future and patterns replicate themselves they do and they're just so helpful like dude I can't tell you how many patterns I've tracked that have played out according to setup. Patterns are uh, a big part of cycle analysis. Um, they, they are. And a lot of intraday POIs are also uh, ways to track if things are going to go up or down. Obviously, knowing a little bit about how the stock behaves, I know a little bit about how AMC behaves. I can pull up another and show you right now another uh, intraday POI. and. A uh, professor had actually uh, brought this one up on the Discord. He was like, yo, dude, look at the one minute. And I was like, let me see it. So I can I can show you and I can pull it up real quick if I can find it. Uh, it, ha it happened like, I think it's right here. Yeah, it is. Here it is. So this. All right, we can just take this entire pattern here. Yeah, let's go. Sure, let's do the whole day. Let's do the whole trading day. You go back here, you go on the hour chart, whatever. And then you got yourself. You got the crown, man. You got, and then look, look at this. Naturally setting up the POIs for you. Look at that. Okay, you have downside. Obviously, the pattern is not, it's like not up here, which is fine. 
but it's pointing out the volume, which is all that matters, which is right here. You get the volume coming in. It doesn't go up the same way, but you get the same POI. I mean, you can even drag it down here, right? Keep dragging it down. You're going to see how things are, are laying out here. Look, even right there, dude. Same setup that's playing out here. And I just pulled up a fractal to show you guys. So yeah, man, this one's clear. I mean, you can even see this too. One of the one of the ways this can end up playing out here is if we get the spring, double bottom, and then start it to climb back up very quickly based on this just just taking what is this intraday POI or intraday uh, pattern. That's it. Now, you know, with cycle analysis, you, I do this, and then I also figure everything else everything else has to check off for me to have some of the POIs because patterns are great and sometimes you know if you're very quickly tracking something intraday and it, it keeps tracking it's a good way to sort of see how on that time frame things can play out how you can cancel out some of these um, uh, some of these POIs that are happening and, and and sort of mesh your own version of that pattern uh, just like we did back here right because the POI is telling us that there's volume right here and then it just replicates its own version of that um, of that pattern back back down here which is completely completely normal it's pretty awesome stuff um, yeah we've seen it dude man with these POIs I remember we used to track the Bitcoin pattern too there's so many let me pull up let's do this let's pull up squeeze candidates where are they at Right here, I can show you like, I'm gonna show you three patterns here. So here's Link. Link, and guess what? <laughs> Why this lines up? Cycle. Okay, Link is uh, is crypto, and even Link's pattern here looks just like AMC's. And what happens after the the POI? Lingering effect lines up with the cycle's POI. Another way to confirm that these cycles are happen and they are true they're real because they happen on every level some stocks do follow very similar cycles and they follow um you know depending where where they're at in in the in the sequence in the setup they do their own thing there so here's link let's pull it back to where it was lock it and then we also have tilray now, tilray for whatever reason is mirrored here there it is tilray same thing now, what do we have for Tilray right now? We're playing out Sim similar setup, right? You come back down, and then here you can tell a little bit that things are almost playing out inverse. I think that's why I added flipped. Yeah, they're almost tracking inverse from this point. So as soon as uh, we have Ape launch, we see Tilray's pattern here tracking inverse, and then hopefully, you know, to play out the sequence inverse as well in its own way using everything else. Uh, so there's Tilray. We also have, obviously, we had GameStop's entire pattern here that we were tracking, and there's a lot of a lot of sections in between that we can see uh, that are tracking just uh, crossing individual patterns in this entire sequence playing out. So there's GameStop, and then one more. It's Bitcoin, and this is the only one. So this one looked very, very accurate from the start here. Why I call it the Bitcoin pattern? Because it is a crown uh, and Bitcoin is plays this thing out like on every single time frame. You can see right here with this setup, uh, as soon as we had that ape launch, it completely gave up until then. So whenever patterns give up, I don't track them anymore unless, unless you have a setup um, like the intraday setup that I just talked about here, which is AMC intraday and um, and and then right here as soon as we start going we start climbing back up this is where you get the shift same POI it's just on a smaller scale all right Yeah, professor up in this man. Yeah, just gave you a shout out, man, because you 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 uh, you point that out, man, on the Discord. 
Yeah, the intraday um, setup here on Amy. And you gotta love these, you gotta love these setups, man. Uh, patterns, just crazy. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we can pull up here. So, yeah, another thing, and I'm gonna pull up AMC plus ape for this. Um, uh, where is it? Okay, let's do the four hour chart. I see AMC is about to hit that double bottom here. I'm looking to bounce here soon. Let's see what else the market's doing real quick. Okay. No, Saba, I would not be looking at anything for downside right now at all because Saba is in that broadening wedge I, we had talked about, guys. And this was one of the POIs that, that um, we had here for this week. You can see here whenever you see these little things. Um, I posted this on Tuesday. And uh, here's a low poly line. I was expecting downside first before it came back up. But we are starting to get that push right now. We just broke it. So that's really good. Now, the reason why I would not be looking at any sort of downside right right now is because this is this that you have to look at the setup beforehand. Whenever you see a downtrend and a pop, that typically means that you might you might get a continuation back down. But you have to think about these rallies the same way as shorting attacks um, to the downside. So if you flip a chart, you know, and you look at this setup here. I would think it would it's gonna keep coming back down look at all these levels of in this case of support and this thing is just looking to break those back to back so I'm actually looking for a big big push on Saba uh, and I think this is gonna be one of the first stocks here that leads the way in this uh, sector rotation here for for shorts covering that has a massive push up why because it has what is this setup? GameStops. This is GameStop setup right here. Okay, and look at how similar these two patterns look. You can already like uh, GameStop before it ran to 500. So one of the one of the things I was tracking here for that was the setup. Then also looking at the volume, the behavior of the volume. Uh, looking at where where really in this period, where else do we see this this pattern sort of playing out here and you can see the same thing back here guys before this thing ran it did the same thing now this is larger but you have a, a you have the same goal okay broadening wedge starts climbing back up confirming these levels of support and resistance i'll show you another stock that did this before it fell back down and this is probably what we're going to expect here with sava in the future I don't go in right away whenever I see things going up on a, on a trend like this. Aprons, another one. Um, let's see where it is. So, a but apron is barely is starting that trend. You so this is another stock that I'm looking at here. First, highly shorted stock too goes up. And it's starting to do that here. So one by one, all these stocks are going to do that when the bearish trend is over. And, and this is one confirmation I have here with all these other stocks that are doing this. Look at that. This is ready to go next, I think, in my opinion. This is also AMC's pattern here, August 24th, going into September 15th before it fell back down. And we have a POI right here based on just that pattern. So... Once you have a POI on that, you take, again, you take the cycle analysis approach, which looks at options, looks at what the market is doing, looks at other uh, cycles and stuff, and then you, you know, you create your best, your best setup, your best judgment on what's going to happen here next. So I see an opportunity here with Apron um, in the shorter term, starting to push back down and bounce soon on resistance. And this is slowly but large it's a larger setup starts here in june 
but it's creating ultimately the same goal. And you can see how, you know, how sh heavily shorted this stock is as well. Okay, very similar setup here. Um, yeah, there's a lot, man. There's a lot of stocks, but... Uh, yeah, and then AMC, another one, right? Major, major one that we're tracking here with the most potential is about to do the same thing, but just in a different way. Hopefully, you know... To have something like that here curl up and start coming back up uh, before they can't stop it anymore. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I do have to. Um, update some things guys and and uh do some stuff for the for the for the discord but i do appreciate everybody coming in here and chilling out with the squad man every everybody here is dope you guys are awesome and and i'm, I'm i am planning on doing this more often here uh whenever you, you know typically here i mean the, the market is in a, in a drier state right now it is just very dry uh there's only about there's, there's some stocks that are going up here. A lot of stocks that don't have an option chain, honestly. Uh, Saba is is a winner, though, right there for sure. It is um, It does have an option chain and stuff, so it, it is a winner. Went up so much, man, today. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, dude. These contracts are up, like, over 1,000%. Wow. Um, so, yeah. I will see you guys soon, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys want to... Uh, join the discord just click the link below and it'll take you straight there and there's some nice people some dope people in there there's both you can you know join the free one is going to be on there as well or you can join the one where we do discord stuff and options and all that good stuff all right you guys have an awesome rest of your day if you want to know a little bit more about amc and what i think about the setup just rewind the video all the way back down to the first 15 minutes it'll talk about the bullish setup and the bearish setup as well okay love you guys Bye bye